Okay, so what we want to look at today um, as we move uh, from Chapter 4 into Chapter 5 is to introduce the idea of a data transformation. So at the end of Chapter 4, well throughout Chapter 4, we were looking at um, the least squares regression line. And one of the conditions for the least squares regression line and the um, Pearson correlation coefficient and all of those things was that the data was linear in form. Otherwise, if the data is non-linear, it doesn't make sense to model the data with a straight line. Okay, So we saw at the end of Chapter 4, we looked at the residual analysis and how by looking at the residual plot, we can determine whether or not um, a linear model was an appropriate model for that data set. And we talked about at the time that um, we would go on to look at, okay, if the linear model is not appropriate, what can we then do? And what we can then do is apply a transformation to the data. Now, technically, um, in statistics, it's possible to apply to to apply non-linear regressions. We're not going to do that. We only do linear regression in further maths. So, instead, what we need to do is to transform our data so that our data fits a, a linear model better. Okay. So, um, we've actually seen uh, quite a bit of this really recently um, amidst the COVID crisis. If you've been uh, checking out the graphs available to you with, you know, um, recent infections or total number of cases or whatever it might be, we're seeing in many places that those, um, that data pattern is following an exponential growth curve. Um, but actually what we're seeing when we look at the graphs is many of the graphs that are being printed and published aren't actually exponentially shaped. So an exponential shaped curve, let me just make a note here, would be a, a curve that increases exponentially, okay? So it goes up and up and up at a faster and faster rate. So I'm just gonna um, jump over and just show you a little website where we can see this, and then I'm gonna come back to have a look at a, a more general conversation about data transformation. Okay, so here I'm on a website. Um, the URL is datausa.io slash coronavirus. Um, and what we have here is a whole lot of graphs. You can you can come and explore and there's plenty of other uh, graphs. Um, I've just picked one as an example, which is looking at the total confirmed cases per capita and it's divided up by state. So what we're seeing here is most of the states, um, in most of the states, the um, total number of cases is increasing at an exponential rate. So at the moment you'll see um, I've got this drop down box on the left hand side here where I can alter the y axis scale. And at the moment the y axis scale is linear. Now that's what we would be used to, where the scale counts up by the same amount each time. But we see here that um, you know the discrepancy between the different states is so great that it becomes very hard to see. So if I hover over this line at the top, you can see that's New York, um, New Jersey also um, are very different to some of these states further down here. And so we're not getting a good picture of these states further down. So because there's such discrepancy between the numbers, we've seen this before. We looked at this earlier on in the data analysis. When we have a data set where there's a huge variation in the size of the numbers, sometimes it's better to use a log scale. And so this website actually enables me to change that y-axis scale from being a linear scale, where we're seeing that sort of exponential shape in these curves, to being a logarithmic scale. And when I do that, sorry, try that again. Ah, there we go. And when I do that, we see a really significant change in the shape of these curves. So instead of, um, you know, the gradient of the curves being quite flat initially and then getting very, very steep, we're seeing that pattern sort of almost inverted. Now, we're talking about in our data transformation, we want to try and create a linear shape. So this new shape we've got by applying this particular transformation hasn't created a linear shape, but it's created a different shape. And this is a data transformation. So we've applied a transformation to the y-axis. We've applied a logarithmic transformation to the y-axis. And now we've seen a log scale before. You can see that the scale is counting up in multiples of 10. So each um, tick on the scale is times 10, times 10, times 10. So we've got a whole different scale here. And consequently, it produces a whole different graph shape. So that's what we want to look at being able to do to our um, data sets. So we want to look at, initially we plot the data on a linear scale, that's that's what makes sense. Um, but if that doesn't look 
straight, then we want to think about applying a transformation either to our y-axis scale, like we just did here, or, or to our x-axis scale. And one of the transformations we will look at is the logarithmic transformation. We're going to look at three transformations, the squared transformation, the logarithmic transformation, and the reciprocal transformation. And we'll investigate those over the next few lessons. So let me just go back to the notes now. Okay, so as I said, we're going to look at three different transformations which can each be applied either to the x variable or to the y variable, either to the explanatory variable or to the response variable. So in total, six different data transformations. What we just saw on the um, uh, Data US webpage uh, was applying a log transformation to the y variable. Okay, so we're going to look at the different ones. So the first one we're going to look at, um, which will be the next video, we'll be looking at the squared or quadratic transformation. Okay, and again, we can apply that transformation either to the x variable, so the explanatory variable, or to the y variable, so the response variable. When we apply a squared transformation to the x variable, the effect that that has is to stretch out the x values. Okay. It essentially squares all the x values. So when you square small numbers, they get bigger, but not by a lot. When you square bigger numbers, they get bigger by a larger amount. So that means if you've got a shape that's sort of curving up this way, you can stretch out those larger x values and hence make the data more linear by applying an x transformation. Similarly, sorry about that. Similarly, we can extend out, stretch out the larger x values in this kind of shape and create a more linear sort of shape. Um, if you apply the x, the, y, the squared transformation to the y variable, it will stretch out the y values. So again, it has a bigger impact on bigger, bigger um, y values. So okay, the smaller y values will also stretch out by a little bit, but the bigger y values are going to stretch out by more. And so in doing that, you get a more linear shape. Okay. Similarly here, our larger y values here will stretch out more than our smaller y values, and so our shape becomes more linear. When we look at the logarithmic and the reciprocal transformations, um, the, um, these are both compressive transformations. Okay, so if we apply the reciprocal, so reciprocal means to flip a fraction upside down, for want of a better word. So for example, if we have two thirds, the reciprocal of two thirds is three over two. If we have the number five, five is five over one, the reciprocal of that is one over five. So if we have the x variable and we take the reciprocal of the x variable, we're doing one divided by x. Okay, and the effect that that has, um, and the, also the effect that doing log base 10 of x has, so applying log or reciprocal to the x variable, is to compress the bigger x values. Okay, it compresses all x values, but the bigger values get compressed more significantly. So, oh, my apologies. So, the larger x values get squashed in, okay, and you get a more linear shape. Similarly, um, here your bigger x values get squashed in so if your shape sort of curving in this direction you're going to create more of a linear shape. If you apply these transformations to your y variable um, you're going to compress the larger y values and so you, we can create a more linear shape here similarly with what's happening there. The reciprocal actually does um, something slightly different. It, its, its ultimate effect is to compress either x values or y values but it does that by flipping the whole um, shape around. And we'll see that when we get to look at that in a couple of lessons time. I'm going to just um, pause the video again and, and just jump over to um, the CAS package. I just want to show you what this is going to look like. And then over the course of the next few videos, we'll actually look at how to execute that. Okay, so here we are in our TA Inspire graphing package. Um, and I've plotted uh, just a random data set, which um, is clearly nonlinear. We've got this curvature. So one thing that we could do to try and make this data set more linear would be to apply a squared transformation to the x variable or the explanatory variable, which would stretch out our um, bigger x values and hence make the data more linear. Now I've already set up the data to do this at the moment. You'll see I've got my explanatory variable versus my response variable on the y-axis. I'm now going to click on this explanatory variable and I'm going to change that to explanatory variable squared. And when I do that, you'll see what happens to the data. It adjusts, the data points all change, but the ultimately the shape becomes more linear. And now fitting a linear regression to this data set is going to provide a better fit. Okay, and we're going to have a look at how to do that.
Okay, so obviously we're changing the data set. Our linear regression equation will no longer be between the EV and the RV. It will be between the EV squared and the RV, but we can still then use a linear regression to create a model that fits the data set. All right, let's have a look at a different data set. So let's say I've got um, this data set here. So this time I might want to um, try to linearize this by stretching out those larger Y values. Um, and so if I do that, it, this time my response variable, I'm going to click on that. And again, I've already set this up. This time I'm going to change it to be response variable squared. So I'm going to square all the Y values. And when I do that, it's going to stretch out those larger Y values. So the whole scale change, it looked like it's squashed down, but the vertical scale changed completely. And we now have something that's not perfectly linear, but it's certainly more linear than it was. We can have a look at the... Um, uh, the log and the reciprocal transformations. So here, for example, we've got a curved um, data set. We want, might want to squash in those larger X values to make the data more linear. And we could do that either by applying a log transformation. So I'm gonna change my explanatory variable to instead be log of the explanatory variable. And when we do that, you'll see what happens here. Again, the scale changes completely, but the result is not perfect, but a more linear set of data than what we had previously. I'm going to take it back to the explanatory variable here. And we also saw that the reciprocal variable can have an effect of compressing the larger x values if we apply it to the x variable. But I told you it actually also does something completely different. It really flips the whole thing around. So I'm going to now have a look at changing the explanatory variable to the reciprocal of the explanatory variable, so 1 over the explanatory variable. And if you think what happens when you take 1 over a number, if you've got 1 over 100, it becomes, sorry, if you've got 100 and take the reciprocal of that, it becomes 1 on 100. It becomes, goes from being quite big to being very, very small. If you've got 2, the reciprocal of that is 1 half. Okay, so 2 goes from being not very big, but to also being smaller but it doesn't get as small as the change from 100 to 1 on 100. So actually, we also get that all the big numbers become small and the small numbers become big. So you'll see what, what I mean when I actually do this. So actually, the whole thing flips around. So it goes from being non-linear to being more linear, but in a completely different direction. But we can account for that in the way that we write our equation because it's no longer a relationship between explanatory variable and response variable. It's a relationship between one divided by the explanatory variable and the response variable. And we'll have a look at that particular transformation um, in itself. All right, again, some um, more data sets here. So, oh, sorry, let me have a go to the graph of this data set. So again, I've got a different um, set of data. I've just made it up. We might want to try to linearize this data by compressing those larger Y values. So looking at our um, response variable, we could either apply a log or reciprocal transformation to compress um, the Y values. And if we apply the log transformation to the um, response variable, so to the Y values, um, we see that the data, again, not perfectly linear. Probably, we could probably come up with a better transformation than that, but it's more linear than it was. If we go back to the standard response variable, so you can see that difference as you watch it there. It was quite curved. It becomes a lot less curved. If we now look at the reciprocal, it's going to flip it around, but also become more linear. Okay, so again, that one's probably not the best transformation. It's not really linear but it's certainly more and we've now created an outlier um, but it's certainly more linear than it was so we need to um, usually in a question you'll be told which transformation to apply but we're also going to do some exploration by trying a couple of different transformations with the data set and seeing which one provides the better fit and obviously we can look for the better fit as measured by the Pearson correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination the stronger they are then the better the fit is so we, we find the data transformation that gives us the best possible R value or R squared value. Um, just as a last example before we finish up this video, um, I've plotted out a, an example, I just um, made up a random data set that might model, if we go back to that COVID example where we were seeing exponential growth if we look at the raw data, but we were seeing many of those plots were not drawn as um, exponential growth and that was to deal with the vast differences in numbers. Um, so I've plotted some points that follow an exponential growth pattern here. Um, so number of days and number of cases, again, completely made up data. Um, but if I then change like we could do on that um, US data website, if I then change the cases variable to log of the cases, we'll see that we get that change of shape quite similar to what we saw um, 
on the website. So if I change it to log of the cases, we see the whole data shape starting to switch around and the curvature happening in the opposite kind of direction. In fact, we've created quite a linear data set here, um, but that's just because I, it's quite a small data set um, and not very big numbers, so we're not seeing that same curve change. Um, but we're essentially, it's still the same data, we are just looking at it through a different lens. Okay, We're comparing not just the number of days with the number of cases, but the number of days with log of the number of cases. And so we create a different curve shape, but we still essentially, the variables we're still talking about are days and cases. We're just going to write our equation a little differently. Okay, So um, let's just finish up back over in our notes. Okay, so as I said, we're going to look at those three different transformations which can each be reply, applied to either the x variable or the y variable. So we've got six total options available to us. The square transformation which will stretch our x or y values out depending on whether we apply to the x or the y variable. And our log or reciprocal transformations which will have the effect of squashing in um, X or Y values depending on which um, variable we apply the transformation to. As I said, a question will usually tell you which transformation they want you to um, apply, but we're also going to do some exploration with particular data sets about, okay, let's have a test run. Let's try the different transformations. And in the last um, exercise in this uh, unit, we'll have a look at, at needing to make that choice. Um, so the next video will be looking in depth at the squared transformation and then there'll be two subsequent videos after that looking separately at the log transformation and at the reciprocal transformation.